What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH, I, I you know, this was a decent episode. Um, we got a continuation of the Davis girls argument. Um, Christina was on fire with what she said to Sam yesterday, but today Molly had to jump in today. And I agree with what Molly said to Sam because, I mean, not to Sam, to Christina. Because Christina was basically saying she wants a relationship like TJ and Molly got. Well, you're not going to get a relationship like that, you know, given the advice that you gave. Oh, you had a one night stand. So what? Keep it from them. You're not going to have a successful relationship like that. Keeping secrets. That just goes to show Christina still has a lot of growing up to do. You have a lot to learn. And you're not ready for a real relationship yet until you fix yourself. You know what I mean? Christina needs to, you know, go on a self journey. She needs to discover herself, what she wants, what she wants out of life for herself. Now, I'm not even talking about a relationship. You need to learn how to love yourself and fix yourself and heal yourself because it was something depressed and something about you that was broken inside of you that made you want to join a cult. So until you heal yourself, love yourself, fix yourself, you're no good to nobody else right now, especially a romantic relationship. And I do agree with Molly. Christina, she felt like Christina shouldn't be given love advice or relationship advice when she's had several failed relationships in the past, which I do agree. I do agree. But what she said to Sam was still valid. It was still true. But she's the last person who should be given advice. But it's still it was true, though. Um. Sam disgusted me the most, as usual, because she was still sitting there defending Carly, Jason, and Sonny's friendship, talking about some, oh, I, you know, I don't get upset when Jason, you know, goes to help them out or clean up their messes because they've been friends longer than he knew me. I don't give a damn about how long somebody been friends with somebody. Once you start dating somebody or you marry somebody, that, that, your wife comes first. Your kids come first before your friends. My friends are currently in relationships. I would never ask my friend to ditch his, his girlfriend or something just to come clean up my mess or come help me out with my problem. I would never ask him to do that. And I wouldn't expect him to do it. You know what I mean? Because once you get into a relationship or a marriage, whatever, and you start having kids or whatever, that's who comes first. Your immediate family comes first, not your friendship. Your family comes before your damn friendship. That's just how it is. That's how it's supposed to be. It's, Sam should want better for herself. She should want better for her children. You know what I mean? You sitting there accepting Jason, running this Carly and Sonny's beck and call. No, no, no. You should want better. You should want better for yourself. You should want to be with somebody who's putting you first. And that's exactly what Drew did. When Drew thought he was Jason, he put Sam first. He left organized crime to put Sam and their kid first. That's what he did. You know, something Jason just is not going to do. You know, she could sit there. I don't even understand how she could sit there and defend Jason, Carly, and Sonny's friendship. Oh, it's okay for him to go clean up their mess or whatever. No, 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 no. You got to ask backwards. Once he got married, once he started having children, that's who should have came first. They come before Carly, Sonny, hell, they come before Michael, period. That's just how it is. And whoever don't like it, kick rocks. But your family comes before your damn friends. That's how it's supposed to be. Sam, she needs therapy too, because clearly you have some something in you that needs healing. Like, you need to go on a self-journey your damn self. Like, that's just how it is. I think a lot of them need a, a good cleansing. They do. So, anyway, moving on from that. So, Alexis got a phone call from the bar, from the New York Bar Association. So, Alexis is officially disbarred. She can no longer practice law in the state of New York. I'm not surprised that that happened, that she got disbarred. I was sad that it happened, but I was not surprised. This is what happens when you perjure yourself. You have to face the consequences, and now her and Neil are both jobless at this point. They're both careerless. You know, they have no careers. Um, but that's the thing, though. Even though Alexis is disbarred, if she has, you know, 
if she can rep like you know be a lawyer in other states because she probably has um she's probably licensed to be a lawyer in other jurisdictions. So if she's licensed to be a lawyer in other states and cities and stuff, like say California, then she could practice law out there. You know what I'm saying? Because I believe she was only disbarred in New York. So she can practice law anywhere else if she's licensed in another state outside of New York. Um, but even still, though, she can still petition to get her law license back. She can still petition to do that. There's there's ways of her that she can get her license back. Because honestly, I think she will get it back because what else is Alexis going to do at this stage in her life? You know what I mean? Like being in her 60s and stuff like that. She's been a lawyer for well over 20 years. So at this stage in your life, what else can you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see Alexis starting over in a whole new field, a whole new career. I don't see her doing that. Law is what kind of defines her in a way. I know Valentine basically told her before that, you know, her law career does not define her. But in a weird way, it does in a way because that's what she does. That's what she knows. You know what I mean? Could she find another career? Of course she can. But for me, why would you want to start over? That's just my opinion, you know? I mean, if she does start over and do something new, I'm behind her. I, you know, I feel her. But at the same time, it's like, was it worth it? This whole situation with Neil, like, was it really worth your career? Like, was it worth his career? These are careers that they work their asses off to get. You know what I mean? Like, you know how hard it is? You know how hard you have to work to become a doctor? You know how hard you have to work to become a lawyer? And they just threw it all away. Threw it away. But I could never. And that's what I said before. Like, I could never throw away something I worked so hard for over something so stupid. I just, I, I could never. I would never. That's just not in me. You know what I mean? Like I could, I can never do no foolishness like that. I just, I, I couldn't. Hopefully she can, you know, dig herself out of this mess. Hopefully her and Neil can come out stronger, you know, figure out their career moves, hopefully, um, and figure out the next chapter in their, their relationship in their life. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, what else we got? So that scene with Sonny and Mike, of course, was touching. It was sad. You know, Sonny was just over emotional. You know, he's just very emotional when it comes to his dad. And I don't blame him, you know, because he basically tried to talk to Mike and ask him, like, what does he want, you know, out of this or whatever. And Mike was just like Yankees or whatever. I think that's what he said. Um, I know it's hard for Sonny to let go of his dad. I know it's not an easy decision to make. It's, it's, it never is like when you're in this type of predicament, you know, this is a, a situation that nobody that you really would not wish on your worst enemy, you know, to be in, to watch somebody that you love, let alone your parent go through something like this. And there's not a damn thing you can do to help them. But in a weird way, there is something that you can do to help them. You can stop the pain, you know, because as they said, Mike was in excruciating pain. He's been going through pain. He's been going through a lot throughout this. As hard as it is to let go, you just have to, you know, you have to, because I would rather you go peacefully than to try to keep you here for my benefit and watch you be in pain just for my benefit of having you physically here. You know what I mean? Like, I would just rather let you go and be at peace. Um, as hard as it would be for me to do that, I, I know it's the right thing to do. Um, and when Mike was sleeping and stuff like that. It just looked like the end is near for him. Like, he looks super tired. I wouldn't be surprised in the next episode or episode down the line that they just say Mike passed away in his sleep. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that soon. Because he just looks super tired in this episode. Like, he just looked like he was done. Like, he just looked like he was over this. Um... But it was good that, you know, to see Felix and stuff like that. I wish that they would give Felix a storyline. You know, maybe hook him up with um, Lucas or whatever. Try to help Lucas comfort him through his little divorce or whatever. We haven't seen Lucas in a little minute either. So, you know, hopefully we get a sighting of him. But, um, yeah, I feel bad for Sonny. 
You know, that's a that's a hard situation to go through right there. You know, and definitely he's missing Dante right now. I think he said it was Dante's birthday or something like that. Um, so, you know, it's even more hard for him not having his oldest there. You know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not opposed to them recasting Dante. I just wish that Dominic would come back. I, you know, I, I didn't really care for the Dante character when he first, first came on. But now over the years, I've grown to kind of like the character. So it's kind of weird not having him around now. You know, for this past year, a couple years or whatever, as a full timer, it's been weird not seeing him. Um, so if they have to recast. I would hope they wouldn't. But if they do, I'm pretty sure Mark Teschner, who is the casting director, is going to do a good job at casting because he typically does. He really has a great eye for talent. Like he definitely knows how to cast the right people in the right roles. Definitely. I mean, do you always hit the mark? Not always, but nine times out of ten, he does a great job with casting. Like, he really, really does. Um, so, anyway, moving on from that. Brooklyn. Huh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Um, I understand that she was looking out for Michael, being her cousin and stuff. You know, she wanted to defend him. I just didn't understand why Chase and Sasha would go to that gym. Is that gym the only gym in that town? Like, you know Sonny owns that gym. And you know that the likelihood of you running into Michael or somebody who's related to Michael is very high. So why would you go there? You know what I mean? Why? And I understand Brooklyn defending Michael because that's pretty much what every woman in his life does. You know, they just take control and defend him. Um... I, I get it, but at the same time, Brooklyn needs to learn how to keep her damn hands to herself and stop putting her paws on people. And even Chase told her that. Like, Chase was letting her know, like, you can't keep swinging on people and punching people in the face and stuff like that. Like, you can't keep doing that because it's assault. That's what it is. You're going to go to jail. It's assault. And that's exactly what he did. He wrote her up. He arrested her again. Like, she just needs to keep her damn hands in her pockets. Like, keep your hands to yourself. You know, you see her punching people in the face and shit every time you get mad and you see them or whatever. So, Michael had to take Sasha to the hospital. I was just really hoping that Chase and um, Sasha would have just confessed that all of this was a lie to get him to marry Willow or whatever. Because it's like, why would you willingly run around town and let people accuse you of things that you really didn't do? Walk around being the town pariah for no damn reason. When you don't have to be. You know what I mean? Like, I understand they thought they were doing the right thing, even though their plan was stupid and it's still stupid. Um, the the hearing is tomorrow. <laughs> the hearing is tomorrow. The custody hearing is tomorrow. How the hell is Michael and Willow supposed to get married that fast in time for the cut? No. This plan was stupid. It, it was just done. I don't see this working. Like, if the hearing is tomorrow, the whole point was for them to get married before the hearing. The hearing is tomorrow, so I feel like it's too late now. Your little window of opportunity went right out the window. Because there's really, you know, there's no point. None whatsoever. What's the point? Let it go. So, anyway, moving on from that. So, Carly and Jax are basically talking because Carly's still pissed that you know, Nina is defending Nell or whatever. Um, I mean, my whole thing about Carly is Carly is one of the most infuriating characters I've ever encountered watching a TV show. She annoys me to my core, but I will say watching her back in the day when she first came compared to now, you do see the changes in her. Has she completely changed? Not really. Not really. I mean, I have seen some growth in her, some levels of maturity sometimes, depending on the situation. But in my opinion, Carly's not totally the same person she was when she first came because she was a straight hell raiser when she first came. Everything about her was manipulative. You know, she had a reason for doing something. Nowadays, it's like it's a bit different than that. You know what I mean? Like, it's different. Um, But to each his own, I mean, everybody has their opinion. You know what I mean? But for me, I just feel like I've seen some growth, some change. I'm not saying she's totally changed like she's, you know, Mother Teresa or something where she's a martyr. Of course not. Carly's still Carly, but, you know, with a little twist to her, you know, with a little with a little age to her. You know what I mean? A little bit of wisdom here and there. A little bit. Not much, but a little. 
Um, so, you know, take it how you want. But I totally understand why Carly is not on board with Nina defending Nell. I totally get it because we've seen this from Nell. Everybody talking about, oh, Nell could change. Listen, I'm not saying Nell can't change. The problem is Nell ain't trying to change. That's what people are not understanding. I'm not saying she can't. I'm saying she's not trying to and she won't at this point. Look at how she was talking to her lawyer and said, calling her son the kid, the kid. Really? Who, who's really? And all of this, everything out of her mouth yesterday was about her beating Carly. That's what this whole custody thing is for her, is winning. That's all it is. A custody battle should not be about winning. It should be about doing right for your damn child. That's what this is about. Look at the way she, I don't get people that defend Nell. Like, I really don't, like, as far as her winning this custody thing, I really don't get it. Oh, she has the right to be a mother. If she really wants to be a mother, her own lawyer questioned if she was prepared to be a mother. Her own attorney. That should tell you something. You know what I mean? Like, shit, I done seen a dog give birth. That don't make it a mother. Like, come on now. To be a mother, it takes way more than just popping a kid out your JJ. It takes way more than that. Way more than that. Hell, it take, even for men, like, it takes more than, you know, two minutes of pleasure to make a baby to make you a dad. You know, you got to be there. It's way more. It's love. It's attention. It's being there, being present. You know what I mean? Like, it's way more to it than that. You know, and I don't know if Nell is prepared for it mentally. Otherwise, like it's obvious that she's mentally unstable. She's unbalanced. That's quite obvious. So, you know, all of that comes into question. And now Nell is sitting there talking about she want Nina to be her witness at the hearing or whatever. And Nina was like, you know what? I can't speak about you as a person because you've only worked for me for one month. And I can't really speak about you as a person. I can only speak about you as an employee. Which I totally understood, you know, but Nina hasn't really, you know, committed to anything. You know, she hasn't committed to speaking on Nell's behalf because, of course, Nell goes and, you know, she puts on the little sob story and, you know, puts her little spins and twists on it to try to get Nina to bend to her will. It's obvious that Nell is not changing. Look, like, like I said, look at the way she was talking to her attorney. She basically threatened her lawyer yesterday. Oh, you better not let me down. Or what? What you going to do? See, this is what I'm talking about with her. She doesn't want to change. That's the problem. She don't want to change. And if she's not willing to change her ways, there's no way you being a full-time mom is going to work for you. Because you're just using that child as a damn pawn, as a piggy bank. That's all you're doing. You're using that child to get money. You're using that child to stick it to the rest of the quarter mains, Corinthoses, Carly mainly. This is what you're doing. And it's showing. It's showing. You know, people like that don't deserve to have no kid. They don't. They really, really don't. Um, You know, even Jax had to warn Nina. Like, I hope, you know, you know what you're doing. Like, I hope you giving Nell the benefit of the doubt don't come back and bite you in the ass. Because, you know, like Nell, it tends to do that. Like, look at everybody around her. They've all been nice. A lot of them have been nice to her, friendly with her. Now look at her. She done burned every bridge that she can burn. Burn that bitch to the ground. Everything that she touched, she has burned to the ground. So Nina better be careful. Better be. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Robert is grieving and mourning the loss of Holly, allegedly. Um. It was so great seeing Mac... Felicia, Anna, Robert, all in the same scene again. It was so freaking beautiful. And then we got Maxie and Peter, which ruined the whole scene for me, um, to be totally honest. I understand, you know, Maxie wanted to comfort Robert and stuff like that. Robert, even though Robert was pissy drunk, he still, his hatred for Peter is still in full effect. He did not want Peter around him. He didn't want to see Peter. He didn't want to talk to Peter. He didn't want Peter's condolences. He didn't want nothing. He just wanted Peter to get the hell out of his face. And Maxie and Anna still sitting there. Oh, you got to be nice. Here go Felicia. Oh, you should apologize. Here go Matt. You should apologize. Everybody keep telling him to apologize. Why should he apologize for how he feel? I'll be damned if I know some things about a person and you expect me to sit here and apologize for the way I react to them. I'm not apologizing for nothing. Y'all the ones that sitting here blind and oblivious to what's really going on with Peter. 
Robert and a few other people are the only ones who see the real. Y'all want to see Peter through rose-colored glasses. That's on you. You don't want to drink the coffee, smell the Folgers, and wake the hell up. That's on you. Don't sit here and tell this man how he should feel and that he should apologize. Yeah, I'll apologize when hell freezes over and the devil's down there shaking in his boots. Then I'll apologize. Until then, I'm not doing it. Period. Um. So... Peter is on the phone, I guess, with one of his, his henchmen, and then his henchman comes through or whatever. And Peter's upset because the plan was not for Holly to die. That was not the plan. But his henchmen basically made it clear that they had nothing to do with Holly's death. His people watched Holly, but they had nothing to do with her accident. They had nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? So apparently Peter had nothing to do with her alleged death. So Anna read the WSB uh, report on Holly's death and it said that her death was work related because she was working as an operative. So it was about work. So I'm assuming they have a body. Then. If her death was work related, then I'm assuming they saw a body and she's really dead because I don't believe Holly's really dead. I don't believe that unless somebody wants somebody to believe it. I really don't believe that nonsense. Um even Anna don't believe it. Anna feels like there's way more to the story than what's in that WSB report. She feels like there's more to it. And you know Anna gonna look into it. If she feel any type of twinge about anything, you know she's gonna look into that. Because she, you know, Anna usually don't take nothing at face value. Um. So anyway, Robert was basically talking to Mac about um, Holly and the good old days and how much he truly loved her and... um. You know, he's just really not taking this well, like at all. So, of course, you know, everybody trying to get Robert some coffee and sober him up and stuff. Um, he's not taking it well at all. But there's definitely more to that story, though. I believe it. Um, anyway, this was a pretty decent episode today. I liked it. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.